Hi everybody. So I had a couple of scrap pieces of oak, about 100 by 100 by 35 millimeters lying around. So I thought, why not try to make a small box out of it? So I quickly designed the box in Fusion 360 Heritage. I put that small logo on the top of the box. The goal is to make it as an epoxy inlay. So let's dive into it. And we're not going to use Fusion 360 to, to make this project. Uh, but we're using the, the much easier software Easel, uh, which comes with the VCarve machine, but you can also use separately. Uh, I don't have a VCarve, but I use Easel quite a lot. Uh, so we're going to make it using Easel. Um, so let's go. So let's start by explaining the dimensions we're going to use. As I said, the pieces are square, 100 millimeters wide, and they are 35 millimeters high. Let's look at the bottom. We're going to make the, the bottom cavity of the box 30 millimeters deep, so we're going to keep 5 millimeters of wood at the bottom of the box. We don't want to go too uh, shallow there because uh, it would be too flimsy. Uh, we're going to have the box, the top and the bottom of the box, uh, get into each other by 5 millimeters, which means that we're going to cut 25 millimeters uh, from the top box and leave. 10 millimeters uh, at the top of the box. Why do we leave more at the top? It's because we're going to carve up there the, the logo we want to put on the box. And so uh, we don't want the carving to go too deep uh, and leave a, a too thin layer on top of the box. The top of the box will be 90 millimeters wide, which gives us 5 millimeters on each side of wood. And we leave a gap of 0.5 millimeters on uh, each side for the uh, rabbit on which the top is going to get in uh, on the bottom. Um, in hindsight, afterwards, I would have probably left one millimeter, one millimeter on each side because now that the box is finished, when I record this, um, it was really tight, and I had to sand around to make sure that it it would fit uh, easily. So. Anyway, in this design, uh, we leave 0.5 millimeters on each side, which means that the rabbit is 89 millimeters wide on the bottom. And if we leave 5 millimeters on each side, it means that the uh, hollow of the bottom is 79 millimeters wide. So let's uh, dive into easel and uh, modelize this so we can we can generate the G code for for the CNC. Easel is very user friendly and super easy to use, but the drawback of that is that as you're not really making 3D, you're making what they call 2.5Ds, only by seeing your uh, shape from the above, um, it's not always easy to figure out how to make a cut like this one. You have to proceed in steps. So um, let me explain you what the steps are to actually make a cut like this one. So we're going to, make, to walk away from the outside towards the inside of the object. The first thing we want to do is the small rabbit outside of the box. So we will ask Easel to cut a shape of 5 mm depth around the box, on the, on the whole box, uh, a little bit larger so we are sure we don't uh, leave any material around the corners of the box. Next, on top of that one, we're going to draw a second one, which is a little bit smaller and preserve the inside of the box and which is 0 mm deep. Um, in effect, it will prevent Easel from cutting that part of the box. Third step, very easy. Um, on top of everything else, we put a third uh, square of 30 mm depth just to cut the inside of the box. So let's see how it works out uh, within Easel. In Easel, we start by creating a new project. We will call it Square Box. The dimension will be um, 100 by 100 by 35 millimeters. We're going to do the bottom of the box and the top of the box separately. We're starting with the bottom here. We're going to use a six millimeters, six millimeter end bit, flat. And I'm going to change cut settings to settings that match my CNC, but they might be different, of course, for your CNC, depending on which machine you use. So we're going to make a first square we're going to center it on the box, so at uh, 50 millimeters, the center of the square at 50 millimeters from the origin point, and we're going to make it 120 millimeters uh, wide and height uh, because we want it to be a little bit larger from a little bit larger than the box, as we explained before. We're going to make it five millimeters deep because we're cutting the rabbit outside of the bottom of the box. Now we are going to 
place the second square, which is uh, also at the center, 50, 50. Um, the width is 89 millimeters, as you can see on the blueprint on the right. We're going to put a small corner radius of four millimeters. So the rabbit is a little bit rounded. And the cut depth of this one will be zero millimeters as the only uh, goal is to preserve the inside of the rabbit from uh, cutting. And this is what it looks like. Until now we have designed our first shape, which is the outside rabbit. We have designed a second shape, which preserve um, the inside shoulder of the rabbit. We just have to draw the third one, which is the inside, the hollow of the bottom of the box. Let's do that. So we will draw a third square, also centered at coordinates 50, 50. So the center of the shape is at 50, 50. It's already the case. It will be the inside hollow, so 79 millimeters wide. And we will also put a corner radius of 4 millimeter. It's a, it's a radius, so with our 6 millimeter um, end mill, which is 6 millimeters of diameter, uh, we should be okay to cut that from the inside. It's not too too uh, tight for the uh, bit to cut. So we give it a 30 millimeter depth and this is how the bottom of a box looks like. So we don't use the bottom, we just have to make sure that our feet rates are okay and we can export the G-code for the machine. The top is much easier, of course, as we only have one cut to make, which is the uh, the hollow on the top. We also make a new square, we center it at 50, 50 millimeters from the origin, the center of the shape. The width is 90 millimeters, as we can see on the blueprint on the right. And we also give it a corner radius of four millimeters, as we did for the bottom. And the depth of cut is 25 millimeters, as we can see on the blueprint on the right as well. And this is what it looks like. Quite easy. The last thing we have to do is the carving on the top of the box. So I make a new design, select which logo I want to put up there. I select this one, I like it. Not sure what it represents, but I find it cute. Put it on the center and I don't want to make it too wide because as the uh, corners of the top of the box will be rounded, uh, we don't want it to be on the rounded part of the box. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be nice. So we make it smaller. For this one, we're going to use a 60 degree V carving bit because uh, you cannot make a lot of details with the six millimeter end bit that uh, cannot make those pointy details on the corners of the design. So we set it to a 60 degree V bit and uh, we put cut settings which match my CNC. But again, you have to put your own speeds and feeds there uh, to match your machine. You remember that we've left uh, one centimeter, 10 millimeters of wood on the top of the box. So we will make this carving five millimeters deep. So we have plenty of wood left uh, below the carving to make the box uh, strong enough. One last thing I do is, uh, especially when I have to make a hollow like that, which needs to be very well centered on the piece, is that I select all of my uh, objects and I center them on the zero, zero coordinates. That way I can start my cut from the center of my piece, which is quite easy to find on a square like that. I, I do it for the hollows, uh, but I don't do it for the carving of uh, the logo on the top. Uh, if it's one millimeter not centered, it, it's not really a problem. So, but I find it easier for the hollows to be really well centered when I start from zero, zero.
Before putting the uh, epoxy resin on the wood, I seal the grain with uh, a lacquer or whatever sealant you want to use. Uh, this way you will have much less sanding to make because the epoxy will not penetrate as deep in the wood as it would without the sealant. So I generally do that before putting the epoxy. The next morning. The next morning, one eternity later, now that we have sanded until 80 degrees, we're going to put the box together and make sure that everything fits and that the borders, the sides of the box, are really flat. So, for that, I use a belt sander which uh, I've uh, fixed to my uh, workbench and I use 120 grit on the belt sander. So make sure that you change direction from time to time so you turn your piece around. Uh, if, if you don't do that then you might end up removing way more on one side than on the other side. Then we send the way up from 120 grit to 180 to 240. So not the funniest part but yeah you have to go through it. Next step is to make the round fillet uh, around the top of the box. I use I use the, the router for that, but you could use, do it with a palm router or even with sandpaper or sander if you want. It takes more time, but it works as well. And we do a bit of 240 grit sanding on this fillet, so it looks nice. Then we make a last light sanding on the corner so they look nice and they're not too fragile. Don't forget to sand the inside as well. And the box is ready to finish. But we're not going to finish it yet. We're going to make a last pass with a 320 grit. And before we apply the finish, I want to give you a small trick that I've learned which works quite well if you want to have a very smooth finish. That trick is to spray water on your wood before you do the finish. So you spray water and what it, what it will do is that it will straighten up the grain of the wood. So you will see that when the water is dry, your wood is completely rough and then you can sand it again and when you apply the finish, all of that grain will not straighten up by itself because it has already done so. So you will have a much, much better finish after that. One hour later. Then when the water is completely dry, you will see that the, the wood is rough again. You can sand it again with 240 and with 320 and make sure you sand the inside as well. I know there is a lot of sanding involved, but if you want to have a really good finish, you have no choice. You will have to sand a lot. For the finishing, I use crude linseed oil, which I apply generously with a small paintbrush. Um, so I can go into all of the nooks and crannies of, of the box and, and I can get oil everywhere. It's a bit messy, but we will remove the excess a little bit later. After we give some time to the oil to penetrate into the wood, we remove the excess and there we go, our box is finished. I hope you liked the box, I hope you liked the video, thanks for watching, don't hesitate to leave me a comment.